greeting to all. Welcome to second day of cultural exchange today, organized by Stecom University Indonesia and the National Transnational Education Association from China. Today, I'm Nokita and will be hosting again for today with my partner Aisha from ITA. Greetings to everyone. Thank you for attending this cultural exchange event day two with us. Today, we are listening to presentations on the topic Authentic Cuisine That's a Must Try in My Country. I am Aisha, and it's nice to see you all again. Okay, sorry. For today, we have an interesting topic about culinary food, and I think this session will make a starving feeling because its country may have a delicious food, right, Miss Aisha? Yes, Miss Novita is correct. When talking about culinary, there is no end to it because there is a lot of culinary diversity and endless delicacies. By the way, talking about culinary, I like laksa from Malaysia, and I really would like to try some nasi biryani. How about you, Miss Novita? Ah, I have one food. I would like to try, but I don't know when this will happen. I crave for goilas from Hungary and Wiener Snickle from Austria. I wish to try this food someday. I see. This is my first time hearing of them and they sound so delicious. I hope we can hang out together someday and try some of the foods we like. We are also very excited to get to learn about the authentic foods in your countries to add them to our list of foods we need to try if you were to visit your country. To continue with today's agenda, we will start now and I'll pass it to Miss Novita to explain the rundown for today's event. Okay, thank you Miss Aisha. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping notes here. Today's session is being live streamed on Universitas Tecom YouTube channel and also I will read for itinerary today event and for today event we will start with the opening speech by Rector from Tecom University represent by Mr. Wibi Adi Alvianto because our Rector have another schedule today and then we will continue with a photo session and we will start the main event for our beloved presenter for the introduced country they I'll have. And after our presentation, we will continue to take a picture again and time to cross link. And for notes, each presenter will have 10 minutes for presentation, no more than this time. So let's start this event today with the handle with Miss Aisha. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I am Aisha and I will be handling this session. First, we will start with an opening speech by the Director of Students Affairs from Stecom University, Mr. Wibi Aridi Alvianto. Mr. Wibi. Okay, thank you, Ms. Aisha. Hello, everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name is Wibi Aridi Alvianto. I will represent the opening speech by Dr. Joseph Teguh Santos. Yo. Uh, Rector of Stecom University Indonesia. <clears throat> Welcome to the cultural exchange. My country has an interesting beauty. Online program organized by Stecom University from Indonesia and International Transnational Education Association from China. I'm delighted to see you all and to have opportunity to welcome our participant for this memorable occasion. For today, we will learn about colonial food from around the world. So this topic uh, make us starving because it is very nice topic. What makes its cuisine unique? That's course we also that neither random selection nor chance cause the choosing develop as it did. First, many of the cuisine culinary traces result from condition that naturally exist in the region or country factors such as geography, topographic climate that can be grown or raised there are historical influence from settlers, defender, and bordering countries. Second, and often determined by the factor listed early many food preference and cultural traits creates to difference that distinguish one cuisine from another, the preferred carbohydrate, whether rice, pasta, bread, or corn, 
make a significant impact on the cuisine. How can one think of Asian cuisine without thinking of rice, the herb species, and other flowering? You lose the create the taste associated with each country. For example, chili peppers and salsa are identified with Mexican cookery, the variety of protein consumed in the region further defines the cuisine, the Jewish and the Muslim stricter against eating pork in the Middle East as well as other places, the absence of beef from India and the abundance of seafood and fish in area near water characterize the cuisines of the place. All these issues clearly affected the cookery in its region and country, causing it to evolve into cuisine as it is today. I think it's enough for the detail of cuisine explained. If if want to know a, more about Indonesian cuisine, you can check my TikTok account. It's WPRD. But for language, my video not using English. I think it's enough for detail of cuisines. I hope through this cultural accent even we can get more information about authentic cuisine must try from my country. To conclude, I would like to extend my appreciation to the International Affairs Organization of State of University from Indonesia and International Transitional Education. Association from China for making this cultural essence even. And finally, I wish you to enjoy the program today and for participants to get to know this other country. Thank you. I will resume this session to moderator. Okay, thank you, Mr. VBRD, for the opening speech. So, right now, we would like to invite everyone to take a few pictures together. So, um, please turn on your camera. Okay, so now I will take the picture in the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you for Miss Aisha. And then we will go to the next session for time for presentation. For first speaker will be handled with Mr. Aska Nahia Amanta from Stecom University, Indonesia. Yeah, for Mr. Aska, the time is yours. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Novita. Okay, uh, I will share my screen. Yeah, can uh, is it display well? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I will start. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Azkanaya Amanta, and I will uh, show you, show all of you, uh, my friends here in, in uh, many countries about most popular Indonesian culinary that you must try. You must try if you go to Indonesia. Okay. I will start with the fact that Indonesia is a high diversity country. We have 17,504 17, islands in Indonesia, 300 tribal or ethnic diversity, and 5,350 types of traditional food and drink recorded by the government. And what, is, what does it mean? Is it mean with the diversity, Indonesia also has diversity of taste in taste of the food and the taste of the peoples. Yeah, for the example, uh, nasi goreng. Nasi goreng is not authentic Indonesian dish, but uh, nasi goreng have a distinct taste in Indonesia, even it is in each region. For example, nasi goreng padang has a very different taste with nasi goreng Jawa, which Nasi goreng padang has taste spicy and savory, and nasi goreng Jawa is uh, sweet because nasi goreng Jawa is uh, used sweet soy sauce. 
and it's very, very influenced by uh, the spice that exists in each region. So the difference of taste in uh, each region is influenced by the spice that exists in each region. In of the many foods and diversity in Indonesia, I will refer to the popular culture of the Indonesian people uh, about culinary. And my subtopic, I have three subtopics. The first one is about rice bed cuisine, then uh, chili sauce and street food. And this is based on Indonesian food that have strong culture. I will start with the rice based cuisine. In Indonesia, we have statement, belum makan kalau belum makan nasi, which mean haven't eaten if you haven't eaten rice. The majority of Indonesian people have been eating rice as their main food for generations. One of the reasons is that Indonesia is a large rice producing country. Because of this culture, a person is only considered to have eaten when he has eaten rice. For example, if Novita asked Novita ask me, uh, have you eaten yet, Aska? Even I have eaten bread, corn, or uh, noodles, or whatever else, usually the answer will still be not yet. This is the, uh, yeah, and this is uh, the most popular rice based cuisine that you must try in Indonesia. The first one is nasi padang. Nasi padang is uh, served with some of flavorful dishes such as rendang, which uh, spicy meat dish that's uh, most of popular food in Indonesia, one of most popular food in Indonesia, and also gulai, uh, which gulai is uh, a type of curry, which uh, the unique about nasi padang is the dish are usually pre-cooked and displayed in a glass, glass case. So if you eat in a nasi padang restaurant, you will choose a side dish like you are buying jewelry or a new cell phone. It's, it's, uh, it's really true. And the second is nasi kuning. Kuning in Indonesia is mean yellow. It's yellow because it's made with a coconut milk, turmeric, and other spices. It's often served during a special occasion, such as, okay, wait, okay, such as uh, weddings, then religious ceremonies, and also sometimes uh, for birthday party. Uh, some of birthday, birthday uh, some of people is make made nasi nasi kuning in their birthday. Okay, wait. The next one uh, is nasi uduk. Nasi uduk is a popular breakfast dish in Jakarta, but now it's almost in every area in Java, or maybe even in Indonesia. It consists of steamed rice cooked with a coconut milk and served with a very variety of side dishes such as fried chicken, tempeh, egg, and tofu. Okay, the fourth is nasi liwet. It's similar with nasi uduk, but cooked with the absorption method, uh, which, which is uh, the rice is cooked in the coconut milk and spice until the liquid, li liquid is absorbed. Okay, the last one is nasi bakar. Bakar in Indonesia is mean burn or, or grill. And nasi bakar is a unique Indonesian dish where the rice is wrapped in banana leaf and grilled over hot coals. The result is a smoky and fragrant rice dish that's often served with grilled fish or chicken and various sambals. Okay. That's, that's the most popular rice-based cuisine in Indonesia. And next, I want to show about something that is almost inseparate, separable with rice, that is sambal. In uh, about sambal, we have a statement in Indonesia too. Uh, the statement is, makan gak pakai sambal, gak mantap, which means eating without chili sauce is not delicious. It doesn't mean that Indonesian people can eat without chili sauce or some or sambal, but this it implies that chili sauce is a flavor that almost must be present when we eat rice. And this is uh, 
sambal popular sambal that you must try if you visit Indonesia. The first one is sambal terasi. Sambal terasi made with chili peppers, shrimp paste, garlic, and lime. It is often served with grilled meats, vegetables, and rice dishes. Sambal terasi has a bold and complex flavor with a slightly sweet and salty taste from the shrimp paste. So the key of sambal terasi taste is in the shrimp paste. The next one is sambal matah. Sambal matah is a raw, fresh, uh, made with salad, lemongrass, chili peppers, and lime juice. Sambal matah has a bright and tangy flavor, flavor with a meat spice flavor. That's perfect for adding a little kick uh, to your meal. <clears throat> okay, the third is sambal ijo. Ijo at, or hijau in Indonesia mean green. So the sambal ijo is a green sambal made with green chili peppers, shallots, garlic, and lime juice. And uh, for my per uh, this is my personal favorite, sambal, uh, sambal ijo. Okay, the next one, we have a sambal rica rica made with uh, chili pepper, salads, garlic, ginger, and tomatoes. <clears throat> Uh, it's a specialty of Manado and often paired with grilled fish or chicken. Okay, the next is sambal pecel. Sambal pecel is a peanut sambal made with roast, roasted peanuts, chili peppers, garlic, and palm sugar. It is often paired with a dish called pecel, which is a type of vegetable salad Sambal pecel has a rich and nutty flavor with a mild level of mid level of spiciness. Okay, the last one is sambal tomat. Sambal tomat is a tomato based sambal made with chili peppers, garlic, shallots, and tomatoes. It's a versatile sambal that can be used as a wide range of dishes, from fried rice to grilled meats. Sambal tomat has a tang, tang, tangy and slightly sweet flavor with a medium level of spiciness. <laughs> yeah, and the last subtopic is about street food in Indonesia. There is no specific statement, but usually street food in Indonesia is a bule or foreigner favorite food. And Indonesia has a lot of delicious street, street food. Another reason why Indonesian street food is always loved by locals and visitors is because the price is generally cheap and fast serving. And this is the most popular uh, street food in Indonesia. The first one is bubur ayam. Bubur ayam is a savory rice porridge dish with various top topping. <clears throat> uh, like chicken, crispy fried salad, sliced scallions, and a drizzle of soy sauce. It's a popular breakfast food in Indonesia and is often enjoyed with a cup of hot tea or coffee. The next one is uh, pempe, the, which is a type of fish cake with ground fish, tapioca starch, and spices. It's a spe specialty of the Palembang regions, regions in Indonesia and is typically served with a sweet and soy sour sauce made with palm sugar, vinegar, and chili peppers. Pempe pe comes in a variety of shapes and size from small, round, to large rolls. And the next is bakso. Bakso is a popular Indonesian meatball soup that's loved by locals and visitors alike. Bakso typically consists of, of meatball made from ground beef or chicken that are flavored in various herb, herbs and spices such as garlic, coriander, and ginger. Okay, the next one is martabak. Masaba have two version, versions, sweet versions and savory versions. Sweet version of martabak may be filled with chocolate or cheese. It's also called a pen, Indonesian pancake, but uh, it have a soft taste uh, for, uh, 
compared with uh, uh, original pancake. And for and the savory version is uh, may include vegetables or chicken. And usually we call in Indonesia here is martabak telur or egg, egg martabak. The next one is gorengan. Gorengan is reversed to a variety of a deep fried snacks. <clears throat> uh, this is very popular in Indonesia in almost every uh, street street uh, yeah street food. I have this menu, and the example of gorengan is a uh, fried tofu, fried banana, fried tempeh, and fried cassava. This is fried tofu in the pictures. And uh, these snakes are often enjoyed as quick and tasty snake on the go. So uh, yeah, just uh, no, no, don't need uh, many time for eat this. Okay, the, the last one is krak telor. Krak telor is a traditional Indonesian snack made with sticky rice, shared coconut, fried shallots, and a fried egg. It's a specialty of uh, Betawi people of Jakarta and is typically served on a special occasions, such as during the annual Jakarta Fair. Karakter has a unique and delicious flavor with a slightly sweet and savory taste from the combinations of ingredients. Yeah, this is uh, this all. And I am Askanaya Amanta from Stockholm University. And thank you for uh, me. Thank you, Mr. Azka, for the presentation from Indonesia. So there were so many rices and the sambal looked very delicious. So now we are moving on to our next um, presenter from um, Belarus, Levotsky Nikita from Bested Technical University. Are you here? Levoski Nikita from Best State Technical University. Okay, so I think we'll be moving on to um, presenter from KV Re State Pedagogical um, University from Ukraine, Natalia Nesterenko. Yes, yes I'm Hi, here. I'll start. Thank you. Yes. Hello, everybody. My name is Natalia Nesterenko. I'm from Ukraine. I'm studying at the Faculty of Foreign Languages at the Kreveri uh, State Pedagogical University. And now I will demonstrate my presentation about traditional Ukrainian cuisine. Um, um, can you see well my presentation? Yes, we can. Yes. Um, so let's start. Authentic cuisine must try from my country. Um, uh, Ukrainian cuisine is delicious, nourishing, interesting, and distinctive. It was created over many centuries and reflects not only the historical development of our people, but also its customs, traditions, and even natural and climatic features in which the Ukrainian people found themselves in the process of their historical development. Ukrainian dishes are known for their variety and high taste qualities. The capital Kyiv represents the classics of Ukrainian cuisine, while Odessa brings in the seafood goodies. Many Ukrainian dishes in include uh, meat, but vegetarians will find plenty of options too. Uh, potatoes, cabbage, pickles, and carrots prevail in uh, savory foods, while cottage cheese is often used in desserts. Now that we are a little more acquainted with the cuisine, here are 10 mouth watering traditional Ukrainian dishes that are not to be missed during your trip to Ukraine. And first of all, the father of Ukrainian cuisine known all over the world is Ukrainian borscht. In Ukraine, there are more than 300 types of borscht, and these are only those that are known and written down. Each family has a special recipe, so everyone has a different one. 
generally we distinguish two types of borscht, uh, classic red borscht and a summer version of borscht, which is called green, one for its distinctive color. Uh, please consider the pictures, and in picture one, we can see Ukrainian red bush, and in picture two, we can see Ukrainian green bush. They are quite delicious. And let's talk about chicken Kiev. Chicken Kiev is a dish that has brought fame to Ukraine, the simple combination of fresh chicken filet with a piece of butter is considered to be quite exquisite all over the world. Nowadays, Chicken Cave is served in fashionable restaurants across London and New York. It is always the first dish ordered by foodies visiting the Ukrainian capital. Uh, Deroni or potato pancakes are an extremely popular dish in Ukrainian cuisine restaurants across the country. These small pancakes are very filling and easy to make. First, the potatoes are grated into a homogeneous mass, then the egg, flour, salt, and pepper are added to the mix, and the resulting mixture is fried in oil. The runim are traditionally served with sour cream. Vareniki is a kind of dumpling. It is made of dough, but the filling depends on the imagination and taste preferences of the chef and their guests. Cabbages, meat, mushrooms, cottage cheese, cherries, currant, or potatoes are the most typical fillings. Ukrainians put sour cream almost in every dish, and these dumplings often get the same treatment. Begin your meal with one of these, you won't regret it. Kolodets. The name of the dish derives from the Ukrainian word called kolodny. Holodets is usually made of pork with retained bones, but meat can be substituted with fish such as spike. Onions, garlic, carrot, bay leaves, and black pepper are added to the meat broth and boiled. Meat is then cut, added back to the mixture, and the holodets is put in the fridge to congeal. Holubtsi are traditional Ukrainian cabbage rolls which are cooked from boiled cabbage, where you take every other leaf to make a new roll filled with boiled rice and meat. A variation of the dish is to use boiled wine leaves for the rolls. The rice can also be substituted with other cereals, mushrooms, Korean carrots, etc. Classic hot tea can be found in many restaurants in Ukraine and on banquet menus too. Uh, homemade sausages consist of meat, fat, and spices in a natural shell. The dish exceeds any store-bought sausage in composition and quality. Most of the Ukrainian families know their own secret recipe and find it easy to cook. Minced pork or beef meat, add some garlic, wrap, and bake. Then the sausages can be frozen and later fried, baked, grilled, or simply boiled as a side to vareniki or banish. This dish is commonly sold on Ukrainian food markets and served in natural cuisine, restaurants all over the country. Salo is not just a dish, but a symbol of Ukraine. We celebrate the day of Salo every year on the 27th of August, and in Lviv, there is a real museum of Salo, where you can see a huge heart made of Salo, which is the largest in the world and got in the Guinness Book of Records. Also serves here unique candies, Salo in chocolate and sushi Salo. Please consider the picture too. We can see a huge heart made of Salo, which is situated in the Lviv Museum. Sirniki. Sirniki is a staple Ukrainian dessert that you can try in most cafes and restaurants of the country. The recipe dates back to the 18th century and remains much unchanged. The key ingredient is cottage cheese, which should be fresh and fragrant. Cheese is mixed with egg, salt, sugar, and flour. 
Cerniki are then shaped in small circles, sprinkled with flour and fried. This dessert is often served with raspberry jam. And Nalisnike, another nourishing recipe, the filling for which can be chosen randomly. Anything that can be wrapped in a pancake can be put inside Nalisnike, but the traditional filling is potted cheese and raisins. The secret to perfect in this dish is cooking it slowly on a low fire. Nalisniki could be mistaken for pancakes, but the difference is that Ukrainian versions are thinner, meaning your filling will dominate the taste. Tourists with a sweet tooth can add jam and sugar. And uh, we've come to the end of our list of Ukrainian cuisine classics. What is common in each dish on this list? All of them are very tasty, useful, and help keep the Ukrainian traditions alive. Don't miss the opportunity to enjoy them. Most Ukrainian dishes are best when they are homemade. So making friends or sampling hearty borscht at your host's house will become an authentic Ukrainian experience of its own. And thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you so much for Miss Natalia. And uh, the next speaker, this is from Brest Technical University from Belarus, Revotsky Nikita. Okay, for Revotsky Nikita. Okay, uh, I will go to the next question. Next speaker from Mikolaev State Ag Agrarian University from Ukraine, Veronika Pantiukina. Yes, yes. Okay, thank I am. you. I would like to tell us about your traditional Ukrainian dishes you must try. Can you see my presentation? Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ukrainian is home to gorgeous architecture, centuries old cathedrals, uh, rugged coastlines, and the rich agricultural traditions that's earned Ukraine the nickname the bread, um, bread basket of Europe. Uh, I can say about uh, the borscht. Uh, as described, the borscht is the most famous dish in Ukraine cuisine. It's a national dish of Ukraine, known for its uh, distinctive deep red color. It refers to a type of Ukrainian beet soap made with beef, cabbage, and variety of fruit vegetables. There are many recipes for borscht as uh, there are Ukrainian cooks, but it's typically made with beets combined with meat, usually beef or, or pork, kwas, beet soup, and a variety of um, salted or boiled vegetables like cabbage, carrot, onion, potatoes, and tomatoes. It's a sweet, tangy, and earthy soup that can vary in thickness and be served hot or cold, usually with a sour cream, garnish, and dill. Bush cooking drawings for existing elements from Ukraine on the elements of UNESCO intangible culture heritage lists. Lviv uh, um, Lenivo Vareniki or Lazy Dumplings. Lenivo Vareniki or Lazy Dumplings are a quick uh, version of Ukrainian Vareniki. Thanks to its easy preparation that got this dish its uh, peculiar name. Lazy Dumplings are incredibly popular with Ukrainians even nowadays. To make the dough, fresh cottage cheese is mixed with eggs, sugar, vanilla powder, and flour. The dough is then cut in small slices, uh, sprinkled with flour, and boiled for a couple minutes. Lazy dumplings can be served with sour cream, yogurt, honey, uh, 
condensed milk, jam, or fresh berries. To Ukrainians, the Vareniki is not just a national dish, it's a symbol uh, of our culture. Mamalega u Oklesha. This uh, delicacy has uh, several names. In the central area, it's known as Mamalega, but the Carpathians people call it Kulesha. Despite the name different in different regions, the recipe for this Ukrainian corn meal must remain the same. Mamalinga is made with corn flour, butter, butter, and salt. The corn flour is slowly boiled with butter and salt you need thick. Uh, the dish is considered ready for consumption once it can be cut with a knife. Hearty uh, mamalinga is typically served with pork rind, brinza cheese, mushrooms, or bacon. Forchmark. The country's signific significant Jewish diaspora has also influenced national cuisine. For this reason, the list of traditional dishes expanded with the inclusion of Forchmark. It is sense it's a fish past made of salted herring, eggs, apples, and onion. First mark is uh, definitely served with a, a crouton from black bread, most often triangular shapes. In Odessa, which is considered the capital of this dish in Ukraine, herring is some, sometimes replaced with spreads. Lviv Sirnik. Lviv is the largest city in Western Ukraine and one of the country's main cultural centers. Aside from its gorgeous architecture, the city is famous for its coffee, chocolate, beer, and this delicious dessert uh, known as Lviv Sirnik. Sirnik in Ukraine means cheesecake. Lviv Sirnik is the most popular dessert in Western Ukraine. It refers to a type of Ukrainian cheesecake made with eggs, vanilla, lemon zest, sugar, and a high fat content cottage cheese or farmer's cheese. Glazed with chocolate and often topped with nuts or berries, Lviv Sirnik is known for its lighty, fluffy, and silky smooth texture. Pasca. Pasca is a special dish prepared in Ukraine for Easter. This sweet bread is usually taken to church to be blessed on Easter morning. The classic Pasca shape is uh, cylindrical with creamy frosting and sprinkles on top. The um, uh, recipe for Pasca only calls for simple ingredients like flour, eggs, butter, and milk. However, some families might add citrus juice, ginger, rum, vanilla, or uh, raisins to make it extra tasty and unique. The Ukrainian belief uh, whispering positive thought when walking in the dough will make the bread become tasty. Traditionally, the bread surface was adorned with uh, celebratory ornaments like flowers or crosses, while modern versions are generally uh, decorated with a pure egg white glass, sprinkles of poppy seeds. Kutya, Christmas porridge. One of the most well known Ukrainian food is kutya. This Ukrainian Christmas porridge is served the first out of 12 traditional Christmas Eve dishes. To make kutya, wheat is boiled for a couple of hours and poppy seeds are ground either with a myrtle and pestle or in a coffee grinder. Afterwards, the ground poppy is added to the softened wheat along with honey, walnuts, and raisins. Uzvar. The uzvar is national Ukrainian beverage cooked with uh, dried fruit and berries. The main ingredients of uzvar are dried apples, pears, plum, and raisins. Sometimes fresh raspberries, blueberries, or strawberries might be added. Uh, nevertheless, the uh, protagonist and um, protagonist and reasons of inim inimitable flower and fragrancy uh, fragrance is honey it uh, substitutes sugar the usual could be consumed borscht, you know, both hot and cold however it's traditionally served cool so ukraine is a country of birth people and uh, Con and countless opportunities. Here you will be accepted as a relative surrounded by a care as at home and get everything done as one would do it for themselves. Here people fall in love like the first time, taste like never before and dress like no one sees. This is a country where the heroic past has given rise to modern feats and incredible people. Here the air smells of freedom and like that our cell overcame darkness. Ukraine is love at first sight and the memories it will make you come back again and again. Welcome to Ukraine.
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pantiokina, for the great presentation for the dishes from Ukraine. So now we are moving on to the next presenter from Best State Technical University, Belarus, um, Levotsky Nikita. Thank you. Uh, do you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Okay. Good morning, students. I'm from Belarus, and now I'm going to tell you about uh, our national cuisine. The national cuisine of Belarus have developed in for centuries. Uh, cuisine was formed under the influence of two main factors, active agriculture and extensive use of local products and influence of neighboring countries and migrants. Uh, since the time of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, Slavic, Baltic, Jewish and Petli German roots have been closely intertwined in the national cuisine. Uh, local products were widely used in Belarus dishes, mushrooms, vegetables, definitely potato, onion, uh, garlic, um, and cabbage, cereals, some fruits, and berries. For many centuries, Belarusians have uh, consumed a limited amount of meat as a rule in holiday dishes. Uh, potatoes deserve special mention, having appeared in Belarus in the uh, 19th century. Uh, they enriched the national cuisine and became the basis of many Belarusian dishes. The two most popular potato dishes, draniki and babka. Draniki is the first national dish that the Belarusian himself will name, perhaps even forgetting about all other traditional dishes. It is hard to imagine a resident of Belarus who would never cook, eat, or threat his guests to pancake made from raw bread potatoes. Officially, the author of the famous potato pancake in Jan Schüttler. Uh, he was a uh, Sapega's personal chef. In 1930, in his book, he described the famous recipe that he inspired from the Germans. The classic recipe includes potatoes, onions, vegetable oil, and salt. To give an interesting taste, you can add eggs, minced meal, liver, bacon, mushrooms, cheese, pumpkin, garlic, or, uh, for example, boiled carrot. Vaniki traditionally served with sour cream. Uh, babka. Babka perhaps the second most popular Belarusian potato dish. It prepared everywhere in restaurants of national cuisine and just uh, for dinner in any family. You can easily see a potato babka on the table. The recipe for babka is very simple. Potatoes are wrapped on the smallest grater, mixed with onions, and even sometimes uh, with shkwarki. Shkwarki is uh, Belarusian roasted chopped meat, and sent to the oven. Then babka is taken, taken out uh, of the oven, and served on the table with hot sour cream, butter, or simply melted fat. Uh, Belarusian cuisine uh, continuously bounded with national holidays, and one of the most striking examples is Maslinsa. Maslinsa is an ancient Slavic holiday with numerous customs, which has come down to our days through the centuries. It is celebrated eight weeks before Easter. Maslinsa is a cheerful send-off winter and spring renewal of nature. The main attributes of the holiday were traditional effigy maslnica, amusements, sleigh, ride, sleigh rides, festivities, and of course, pancakes. Round, radio, hot, uh, they used to have ritual significance since they were a symbol of the sun, which flooded up and brighter and brighter 
let's run the dex. Uh, pancakes or in Belarusian blini uh, were baked in the old days in huge quantities and very different from buckwheat or wheat flour, large, large in the whole pan or small with a tea sauce. Each hostess had her own recipes for making pancakes and kept them secret. Usually pancakes were stuffed with caviar, sour cream, eggs or jam or with honey. And a good accompaniment uh, for pancakes is machanka. Uh, machanka, but many people write and say mochanka, is authentic Belarusian national dish, which is prepared from available meat products, ribs, brisket, sausages. Uh, first, is, first they are fried and then stewed with the sauce on the flour and butter. Some advice adding milk or sour cream to the sauce. Machanka is served in every Belarusian restaurant. Uh, the name Machanka comes from the Belarusian word machas, which means uh, deep, to deep. Soups. The tradition of making cold soups come uh, exclusively from Belarusian cuisine. Soups are prepared not only from beets, but also from sorrel uh, and even nettle. Cold soups. Uh, is the best escape from the salmon big heat. Uh, the tradition recipe has its own characteristics depending on the region of Belarus. There are a great many varieties of cow soups. Zhu uh, is a national dish of Belarusian and Polish cuisine. It is a kind of uh, sour soup based on oatmeal tzeze, sour flour. The soup can be either Lean, obviously, meat, brisket, smoked bacon, or ham. In both on, in Belarus and Polish cuisine, June was prepared uh, on the basis of different types of flour and even cereals. Oats, uh, oats, so, soda, uh, flour from ground buckwheat, rye, or wheat flour. In many restaurants of national cuisine, at your request, um, they can serve June in a bread. Uh, it is also very impressive. Um, beverages. As beating, uh, Belarus has a lot of um, beverages, uh, like other Slavic countries. Um, you know, class, some bitters, uh, compote, but uh, my favorite beverages are spitting and mors. Uh, spitting is a traditional drink popular in Belarus since. 18, 19 centuries. It is not only delicious, but also useful because it's prepared on the basis of honey, spices, and even medicinal herbal preparations. Uh, it is for, for this reason that it is used in folk medicine as a remedy for scurvy. Traditional beating was consumed very hard. Uh, today, it is more often associated with a soft drink. Using beating in cold form, can perfectly decrease your thirst uh, and cool down. It's beaten a drink made from uh, honey, water, and spices. It can be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Most. A drink made of fruits and, beverage, uh, and berries capable uh, of refreshing in the summer heat and quenching thirst is called most. It is, uh, has not only an excellent taste, but also healing effect. Berry juice is saturated with many minerals necessary for correct digestion. Uh, uh, most often, berries are used for preparation of mars, cranberries, red, black currants, cherries, and blackberries. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you so much. And we will go to the next speaker from Oromia State University, Mr. Endale Tola. Yeah, for Mr. Endale, the time is yours. Thank you. Yes, hello. hello. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say, Good morning, all of you, or a good afternoon. Uh, now I'm going to present the 
cousins or authentic cousins of uh, Oromia State University or Oromia Regional State. Uh, when I come to my presentation, the first one is Bunakala. Bunakala is one of the slathered coffee beans. Yeah, sorry. So Bunakala is one of uh, the Ormeo cultural food that is made up from the coffee beans. So, which is a very delicious food, uh, which is made from uh, butter and uh, and uh, washing uh, appropriately, and uh, and and also it is a unique food for the Oromo people. Next to the bunakala, it is chumbo or chororsa. Chororsa or chumbo is one of the Oromo cultural food that is made with brown tea, teff, uh, flour. And uh, and uh, cheese, cheese pepper, and better butter, the black, cardamom, and the salt. It is ingredients. These are the ingredients of the uh, chumbo that are made from it. Okay. The other one is anchote uh, or coconut uh, absinica. That is, it is a food, traditional food that is made up from vegetable roots. So it is very delicious and also very healthy food. The other one is, it is chachapsa. Yeah, uh, almost similar with the others that we are going to see. Chachapsa, it is made up from the uh, wheat and the Berlin uh, fl uh, flour. And uh, very delicious food again. It is made up from, uh, from uh, butter, stilled butter. The other one is chuko, it's similar with the uh, uh, but this one is very and also sophisticated and a very interest, uh, interesting food or delicious food that is made up from uh, the floor of uh, uh, Berlin. Uh, you know, it, uh, there are again others uh, ingredients, a spice, including so it is made up from that. The, now I'm going to give you uh, one uh, video just before that. We do have again coffee. It is the origin of the coffee uh, country, especially uh, as I said earlier. Uh, uh, Bunakala is it is uh, uh, the food that we occasionally uh, use. And again, when we uh, the 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 guests come to our country, we invite to have coffee uh, cup of coffee. And that's why now let me invite you to. The video that uh, show different food that we, the authentic cousins or culinary. So let me let me invite you. Just please watch it. Yeah, this is, is a, it is made up from the traditional material. You know, this is, there are beers. Sustainable from the material is made from uh, different beers. That is in Afan Oromo Doka, we call it. Yeah, again, this one is Elella in Afan Oromo. Elella, we call it the, the original name, the material which is made up of. And again, the wood, it is made up of from wood and again, clay. So, this is again, uh, it is a uh, coffee beans. We roast it, okay, to serve our uh, guests. Yeah, this is again, it is what I said earlier. Yeah, this is choco in other way. Color is depends on the spices that we use, you know, fluctuates from the spices that we use. Yeah, similar, this is a, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, kinche. It is made up from wheat. Yeah, this is uh, it is chumbo, the one that, that I expressed earlier. Yeah, the way they prepare, you know, these are the our women, legend women that when they prepare it, it is milk. Again, this is bunakala, it is made up from milk and uh, 
this is Chukwa again. How they made it, you know. So when we come to uh, Oromia, particularly, you may have these all foods that we are you know, displaying on this video. So it's very delicious. We invite you to, 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 to enjoy with it. Yeah, this all the material. Uh, again, Chuko, the way it's prepared. This one is the one which is bold. Uh, seen is it is you know what call it a circle. Not I mean that's all not. Thank you so much. This is all about what we have. Uh, I would like to invite you when you come to Ethiopia, particularly Oromia, regional state, just uh, you can have uh, the, uh, the, the videos that we display, the food, the traditional food and the others. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Indali, for uh, presenting the interesting foods that you guys have in Ethiopia. Yeah, so I think now we can um, move on to our next presenter from Pakistan, from the University of Faisalabad, um, Konain Raza. Is Konain Raza here? Konain Raza from the University of no, Faisalabad. Yeah, uh, am I clear? Yeah. To all of you? Yeah, so you may present now. Thank you. Hello. 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 Yeah, hello. We can hear you. Hello, am I clear to all of you? Yes. Okay, so um, I think Mr. Indale is having technical issues. So we are moving on to University of Benda, South Africa, Winners Matemula and Hope Nefi Fidi. Are there winners? Matebula and Hope Nefifidi from South Africa. Okay, so um, let's move on to Seba University from Libya, Ms. Fatima Salim Adiab. Are you here? No. Um, maybe we can go to, to another speaker. Mm. Uh, I think Serhi Kikrov from Ukraine already in the Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Last speaker. Okay. okay, so um Krishov Seri from Oles Honcha. Yeah. Thank you.
Hi, good afternoon, dear listeners. Uh, my name is Sergi. I present in the Dnipr National University, named after Oles Gonchar, the city of the Dnipro. Uh, culinary traditions of the Dnipro region come to you afternoon. In 1416, the underground travel block in the most delicious clowns in the world. Ukrainian cuisine greatly entered the top 10, and in Europe, it was recognized as the third. Since then, the popularity of the new gastronomic traditions have to discuss. Uh, Mirova chefs and the restaurateurs uh, raving forgotten southern dishes and surprising not only guests of the country, but also Ukrainian themselves. Permutation Ukrainian cuisine. Ukrainian cuisine is more than 7,000 years old. It was stated by the people of Tripoli. Uh, it was then uh, that our ancestors learned to make bread the main products for many inhabitants of the planet. At first, in the West Fresh, they learned how to make something. The first products were made of rye flour, but of different regions of Ukraine. Different ingredients, the how it did to it, which contributed um, to an incredible diversity. Around the territory of Ukraine, we have a very homogeneous uh, set of food raw materials, pork, large beets, uh, wheat flour, legumes, vegetable oil. The traditional Ukrainian dishes are mainly about uh, stewed and break. After all the manipulations which food we carried out in the oven. And the most common way is storing products with uh, salting and the fermentation. Uh, the police in siege. Uh, popular food uh, in siege uh, is uh, perch like uh, dishes made from various brains Solomacha, Teteria, Sherba, Bratko. Uh, Kulish was also after prepare. The basis of the Kozak diet was a variety of Yushkis. Uh, Dnipek cuisine. Dnipek cuisine is multinational representatives of more than 139 and nationalists live on the territory of the region. Everyone has their own national culinary traditions. A tradition dish of the native inhabitants of the Dnipro region was baked uh, host pumpkin with half boiled rice pages, to which dry fruit, pears, apples, uh, raisins, uh, prunes, dry apricots, uh, gooseberries, rose cans, uh, be uh, re added but was placed in the middle. From Jewish uh, and Argy, uh, I'm sorry, from Jewish and Armenian cuisine, the preparation of baked poultry and game, chickens, gany, fowls, ducks, pheasants, turkeys, uh, rich fruit, uh, cravings, fox, apples, pears, uh, persimmons, plums, and with herbs and spice become part of the region. Traditional uh, Yushin tradition in uh, Saiwan, Tormin, Tarragon, Basil, Thaim, and Dill. Living in the Yekaterinoslav region, uh, Azerbaijanis in addition of pilaf begin to prepare non-traditional lula kebabs. Uh, under of the mint lula kebab, um, Mm -hmm. A lamp, they begin to the use pork and beef one to one. Uh, be short to the Ukraine, killed the night in Kurduk when frying. The Greeks brown the tradition of the 18 nuts, hyzen nuts, uh, walnuts, uh, almond nuts, uh, fruits, uh, 
embryconce, miles, uh, beaches uh, of rising in water before serving, but indeed not stick. Uh, residents of the Nipper region gain some fruit fresh in the form of jam. The Moldovan diaspora is very similar to the traditions of the ethnic Ukrainians, namely in the preparation of delicate spicy and uh, forgotten dishes for cereals, uh, dairy products, fish, and uh, various fats. Thanks. Okay, thank you for Sen Mr. Seri. And then we will go to the next speaker from University of Malaysia, from Mr. Sirinyal Hediminian. Yeah, for Mr. Srinia, the time is yours. Thank you. Oh, Miss, sorry. <laughs> Hello. Hi, my name is Rina Lechaminen. I'm from University Putra, Malaysia. Um, today I will present about authentic cuisines from Malaysia. Okay, uh, first of all, as we know, the unique charm of Malaysia is that Malaysia has a very diverse population of citizens. This is because for hundreds of years, Malaysia has served as a rich melting point of Southeast Asian culture and ethnicity. Uh, before this, a lot of people immigrated to Malaysia from other countries such as India, China, uh, Philippines, Thailand, and so on. So this formed a very uh, large group of ethnic communities in Malaysia. And the largest group of Malaysians consists of Malays, Indian, and Chinese mainly. So the uh, when a culture lives together, when it, a lot of ethnics live together, live together, this leads to a very heavily in, uh, influenced various cuisines. It is uh, with, with such diverse population, it is uh, important to identify the main culture. Our main uh, ethnic is Malays. So uh, our cuisine is mostly halal. Uh, we see a lot of Indian influencers, Chinese influencers, and ethnic Malay influencers in our cuisine. Mainly Indian influences are from the way we make our curry or uh, the spices that we use. Chinese is usually fusion and Cantonese influences and also uh, the way how we use our soy sauce or tofu or sprout beans and so on. And ethnic Malay are from Indonesia, uh, influences from Indonesia, Singapore and so on. So uh, without further ado, I will uh, perform my, I will present the best foods in Malaysia, top five foods. Uh, first is nasi lemak, uh, which is my favorite uh, food in Malaysia. Uh, usually we eat nasi lemak for breakfast or lunch or dinner. It's an all, all day food. Uh, even though it is quite a uh, heavy food, but uh, we Malaysians always eat it for breakfast. Nasi lemak, it's literally translate to fat rice. And uh, the main component of nasi lemak is actually um, sambal. Uh, which is a kind of paste that we make from dried chilies, uh, cucumber and peanuts. These are the main um, staple of a nasi lemak. And usually the accompaniments change. Uh, usually we have like anchovy sambal, like chicken sambal and so on. Uh, next, I will present about kerepo leko. Kerepo leko is type of a fish cracker uh, from uh, a state called Terengganu in Malaysia. Uh, it is a mixture of fish and sago flour. Uh, uh, Kerpo leko is made by uh, uh, mixing, uh, by blending the fish mixture and combining with sago flour to make a cracker. And it is fried uh, and usually it is eaten with chili sauce. Uh, it, it also, it has a very fishy taste, but when you eat it with a sauce or a coffee or, and uh, drink it with a coffee or tea, it provides a very nice taste. Uh, third one is Sarawak Laksa, which is uh, one of my 
favorite food in uh, Malaysia. Uh, it is it originates from a state called Sarawak in Malaysia, and uh, the it is uh, made of broth and uh, any kind of noodle. So the broth is actually made from twenty plus various uh, ingredients, usually uh, shrimp or chicken, uh, basil, uh, a lot of spices and everything, and it is accompanied by vermicelli noodles. Or you can also use any kind of noodle, but uh, usually in Sarawak laksa, we use vermicelli noodles. And on top of it, we will serve it with shredded omelette, cooked prawns, or shredded chicken. And uh, they will also give, give you a lime, which you can squeeze it on top of the soup to enjoy a more fresh, full taste. And the fourth one, I went for a very simple snack, uh, which is everyone's favorite in Malaysia. Uh, it's called curry puff or curry puff. It's a very small deep fried beer pastry filled with, usually it's filled with potato curry, but there are various uh, varieties such as you can fill it with uh, chicken, you can fill it with egg and so on. Uh, we eat it uh, for breakfast or tea time in Malaysia. And the last one is uh, a dessert uh, from, it is called Sagu Gula Melaka. Uh, it originates from a state called Melaka in, in Malaysia. Uh, it is, a, it essentially is just a pudding, uh, which is made from a, a plant called Sagu. And uh, we accompany with coconut milk and thick palm sugar. A palm sugar is, a, it's like a brown sugar, but it's much more thicker and much more, the taste is much more creamy and caramelized. So uh, we pour the coconut milk on top of the sagu gula melaka and we just eat it like that. It has a very sweet and caramelly taste. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. And if you have any questions, you can ask. Okay, thank you Ms. Srinia from Malaysia, University Putra Malaysia for introducing the cuisines from Malaysia. And now uh, we are moving on to our next presenter from the University of Faisalabad, Pakistan, uh, Mr. Konain Raza. Yeah, you may start your presentation. Thank you. Hello. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. There was actually a net problem. A net. Uh, so am I clear now to all of you? Yes. So, Assalamu alaikum and hello. My name is Kunal Raza and I'm from the University of Faisalabad, uh, currently doing my uh, bachelor's program in nutrition and dietetics. Uh, today, I'm going to sh uh, share uh, with you some uh, lavishing cuisines of my uh, country, which will uh, surely make you drool. Uh, uh, 10 minutes is actually uh, a very short time for uh, showing all the heavenly cuisines of my country, uh, but I'll try my best to uh, show you the major or the most traditional uh, particular uh, foods which are uh, identity of different regions of my country. So starting with, <clears throat> sorry. So these are the regions or different provinces of my country. So I am telling you step by step accordingly. So first of all, uh, Punjab, uh, the Punjabi cuisine, <clears throat> the Punjabi cuisine. Uh, starting off with Punjab, it is the largest province in Pakistan and its cuisine is known for its rich uh, uh, and, for, uh, and robust flavors with a focus on wheat, rice and dairy based products. Uh, Punjabi cuisine is famous for its rich and uh, flavorful dishes including tandoori chicken, butter chicken, chole bhature, pai and hari. And there are a lot of uh, food items uh, uh, which, which we can consume. But the most uh, common and particularly used uh, uh, foods are Sarso ka saag with makki ki roti and pai, which is their identi uh, identity and their tra uh, traditional foods. So first of all, we'll discuss sarso ka saag with makki ki roti. Uh, this, uh, this food is a popular and traditional Punjabi uh, dish that is uh, also commonly uh, enjoyed in Pakistan. Sarso ka saag is a green vegetable dish made with mustard greens and spinach, which are cooked with various uh, spices and herbs, including uh, uh, ginger, garlic, and green chili peppers. The dish is usually served with makki ki roti, which is a type of corn bread made with cornmeal and water. Another famous dish, uh, dish of Punjab is pie. This is the picture of pie. Uh, 
this dish is often enjoyed as a breakfast or brunch meal pie is uh, typically served hot garnished with chopped fresh cilantro and green chili peppers with naan or roti bread on the side uh, some people also like to add a squeeze of lemon juice or dollop of yogurt for extra flavor pie is a hearty uh, filling dish that is uh, often enjoyed during special occasion occasions or festival uh, festive events such as weddings or eid uh, celebration which is our holy event now moving forward to the sindh region so sindhi cuisine is the cuisine of the uh, sindh province in pakistan and it is known for its unique blend of flavors spices and ingredients uh, the food is typically spicy and rich in flavor with a mix of meat uh, vegetables and grains <clears throat> now we we'll discuss sindhi biryani uh, which is a uh, a top uh, food uh, and, and the identity of sindh Uh, actually, there are a lot of biryanis which we can find in uh, my country, but in this specific region, uh, uh, no one is compatible to it. So, uh, it is a very uh, popular rice-based dish that is flavored with spices, meat, and vegetables. In Pakistan, you will find numerous uh, kinds of biryani, each one more flavorful than the other. Sindhi biryani is made using a blend of spices, tomatoes, yogurt, and meat, usually beef or mutton. It is character. Uh, it is characterized by its uh, spiciness and uniqueness of its uh, flavors. So, after that, we have kebabs, or we can say them uh, Sindhi kebabs. These are uh, basically uh, traditional foods of uh, uh, Sindhi culture, and uh, they are very delicious and flavorful uh, uh, foods that can be enjoyed as a main course or as an app appetizer. In Pakistan, uh, uh, street food. Uh, Uh, they they're also served in Pakistan as a street food with crisp, uh, crispy fried onions and a tamarind chutney, or we can say yogurt. Now the Balochistan region, uh, the Balochi cuisine is also known for its uh, simple and uh, simple yet flavorful dishes that are influenced by the region's rugged terrain, harsh climate, and nomadic lifestyle. Uh, it is a, uh, as we know, Balochistan is the largest provision in Pakistan area. Wise, it is basically located in the southernmost part of the uh, country. So its cuisine is basically influenced from the Persian, Mughal, and Central Asian side. So here are some uh, popular traditional uh, cuisines of Balochistan. So first of all, we have saji. Uh, this is a popular Balochi dish made with roasted lamb or chicken, which is marinated in a spicy yogurt and spice mixture and cooked slowly over hot coals. It it is usually served with naan bread and a mint cilantro chutney, and we can also have it with rice as we can see in the picture. Now the balochi pulao, this is also a rice dish and a very unique one. Uh, it is uh, made up with uh, meat, rice, and various uh, spices, including cumin, uh, coriander, and uh, turmeric. The dish is usually topped with uh, fried onions and served with raita, which we can say blended yogurt with uh, you know, different kinds of herbs. The next one is dampukht. This is also a very sorry. Uh, yes. Now the KPK region, the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region, it is also known as KPK, is home to many different ethnic and uh, cultural groups, and it reflects uh, this diversity. Uh, the region's cuisine incorporates elements of Pashtun, Hindko, and Punjabi cuisine. It, it, it is basically a mixture of all the cultures. But its main uh, food items that we discuss uh, are kabuli pulao and mandi kadai. So first of all, we we'll discuss kabuli pulao. This is a uh, basically a famous Afghan dish made with basmati rice, meat, usually lamb or beef, and uh, various spices, including cumin, cardamom, and cinnamon. The dish is usually topped with raisins and almonds. Now the next one, mandi kadai. It is also known as uh, uh, namak mandi kadai. It is a spicy, flavorful meat uh, meat curry made with chicken or mutton. Tomatoes, onions, and various species, uh, including cumin, uh, coriander, and red chili powder. It is usually served with a naan bread or uh, rice. Now moving forward to the Gilgit Baltistan region, which is the uh, no uh, northernmost part of Pakistan, uh, bordering China and uh, India. Due to its geography and isolation, uh, the region has a unique cuisine that is influenced by Central Asian, Tibetan, and South Asian countries. Uh, uh basically uh, this uh, region has uh, uh, has a hearty hearty uh, flavorful and filling uh, flavors with a focus on meat and dairy products uh, its main foods which we uh, which i'm going to mention to all of you is chapshuro and harissa so first of all chapshuro 
as we can see in this picture, it is a savory uh, filled, uh, savory pastry filled with minced meat, uh, onions, and various species, including cumin and coriander. The pastry is usually baked in a tandoor and served hot. Tandoor, we can say, is a, is a, is a hot oven made up of uh, uh, sand clay, and uh, it is uh, and the, the uh, and the uh, pastry is uh, burned in it. So uh, now the next one is harissa. Harissa is a traditional uh, uh, porridge-like dish made with wheat, meat, uh, usually chicken or lamb, and various spices including cinnamon and cardamom. The mixture is cooked slowly uh, over low uh, heat uh, until it forms a thick, hearty stew. So now moving forward to the next region, which is Azad Kashmir. Azad uh, Kashmir, also known as uh, Azad Jammu Kashmir, is home to many different ethnic and cultural groups, and the cuisine reflects their diversity. Uh, the Kashmiri uh, cuisine incorporates elements of Kashmiri Punjabi and uh, Pahadi cuisine, which is which, which we can say is a mountainous uh, uh, cuisine. It is also influenced by, uh, by the region's history of uh, migration, trade, and uh, conquest. So uh, now we'll discuss the main uh, food items of this uh, region. First of all is uh, Kashmiri chai. Kashmiri chai uh, is basically uh, known as uh, pink tea. is a traditional tea beverage that originates from the Kashmir Valley in uh, Pakistan. It is a popular beverage in the region and is known for its distinctive taste uh, and pink color. It is uh, uh, prepared uh, using a unique blend of green uh, tea leaves, milk, salt, baking soda, and other spices such as cardamom, cinnamon, and sometimes saffron. Uh, now, dam aloo. Uh, it is one of the most famous dishes in uh, Kashmir, which is a vegetarian dish made with uh, potatoes, onions, tomatoes, and various species, uh, spices, uh, including cumin and turmeric. The mixture is uh, cooked slowly over low uh, heat until the potatoes are tender and the flavors are very blended. So now I would like to present you a picture showing different uh, food culture of Pakistan. So let's have a look at it. Uh, I'm sure all these wonderful, uh, playful and tempting cuisines of my country, Pakistan, must have made you drool. So, and uh, I would like you to invite uh, to my country, Pakistan, to have a taste of heavenly cuisines. And uh, I'm sure you want to get that. Thank you so much uh, for your interest and attention. Thank you so much for Mr. Konai and Raja. And then we will go to, to the next speaker from Dimitro Motori, Tafria State Agrotechnological University from Ukraine, Mr. Danilo Mazankoy. Yeah, for Danilo, the time is yours. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I need to wait for my teacher. Maybe somebody else can do it for now because my teacher will join us after maybe in 10 minutes. Yeah, thank you. And we will go to, to thank the, you so much. Yeah. I will go to go to, to the next speaker from University of Penda, South Africa, Mr. Wiener Mate Bula and Hopne Pipindi.
Yeah, from student from University of Venda. Hi. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, two of our students are currently engaged now or they're writing a test, uh, but um, they, they noted that they'll be here in uh, five minutes time. So I'm not sure if it's possible uh, to uh, give them five minutes to get here and prepare for the presentation. Is it possible from your side? Uh... Yeah, I think um, we can wait first and then we maybe in five, you, you say in five minutes, right? Yes, yes. Mm, so um, maybe we can have like a small talk first before starting with um, the South Africa. Yeah, Miss Novita, I think we can have the small talk session first while waiting for uh, the South African students. Yeah, thank you for informing. Thank you. I I'm, I'm so agree with you, Miss Aisha. Yeah. <laughs> For all the students represented by university, are you available in Zoom right now? Yeah, I think um Mr. I uh, Mr. Daniel, are you ready? Mr. Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. Oh. Mazanko. Uh, sorry, not now. All right. Maybe in five minutes. Yeah, all thank right. you so much for understanding. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, after all the presentations that we have seen, um, do you have any foods that <laughs> that um, you're interested in, Miss Novita? Pardon? After all the presentations of food that we have seen until now mm -hmm. which which food do you think that you would like to try i am interested uh, from belarus food i'm not sure what this name but they say the potato it, yeah <laughs> yeah I'm the potato zone what name <laughs> yeah um that looks uh, delicious Yes. Yeah, from Hannah Sharon Nick. She said all dishes look so delicious. It would be great to try all of them. Yeah, actually all of the foods that were presented just now look very delicious. And we would like to try um most of them actually. Then um I think there is one dish from um U Ukraine, I think. Is it from Ukraine? The one the, the cold one? Does maybe, anyone remember? <laughs> maybe from another audience or, or the speaker can yeah. us for the speak. <laughs> yeah. From our um, presenters, do you guys have any um, food that you would like to try after seeing those presentations of foods? Mm -hmm. You may open your mic and share your thought with us. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what your food will try after our student presentation, Miss Aisha? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, so, help. Okay. Okay. You may start your presentation now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for having me here again. Uh, today I prepared a presentation about my cuisine, about my country's cuisine, uh, which is Ukraine. And uh, all of the dishes are pretty much easy to cook at home. And I highly encourage everybody to, to make screenshots so that you can find in the future the name of the dishes on the internet and cook it at home. And the first one is holoptsi. And it is a very 
popular dish on special events in Ukraine, such as New Year, birthdays, and some other very important days in our country. And according to the classic recipe, holubtsi is cooked from the boiled garbage, where we take every other leaf to make a new roll filled with boiled rice and meat. Also, the rice can be substituted with uh, some other cereals, mushrooms, Korean carrots, etc. But it's not necessary. And uh, classic holubtsi, uh, you can find it almost in every Ukrainian restaurant. And uh, they will not be very expensive for you in Ukraine. And uh, in the other slide, you, as you can see, it's not difficult to cook it, but you need to look up the, the recipe so that you can cook it correctly. The, the next one is deruni, also known as potato pan pancakes, but in my family we call them draniki. And this is a very popular dish, and uh, I know in many families they cook it almost every day, and you can eat it instead of crisps, you know. And uh, it is made from grated potatoes mixed with a variety of ingredients. Uh, for example, the grated potatoes are combined with onions, flour, seasoning, and uh, sometimes eggs, if you want to create a be better like mixture. And then this mixture is a spoon onto a hot griddle or frying pan and fried until golden brown on both sides. And the texture is crispy on the other side and soft on the inside. And uh, again, we can see that it's not difficult to cook it at home. And I highly encourage you to look up the recipe on the internet because it's going to be so much easier for you to cook it, I'm sure. The next one is vareniki, also known as pierogi, some people may say. And they are a very popular traditional dish in Ukraine and in other countries in Europe. And they are often served on special occasions, such as holidays, weddings, family gathering, but sometimes you can cook it like just if there is no special event. And vareniki are, they can be enjoyed as a meal or snack. And uh, you can also customize uh, the taste with uh, a lot of other ingredients. You can cook it with potato, with uh, almost anything, I would say. Yes. And uh, the last dish is borscht. And it is a bit uh, difficult to cook compared to the previous dishes. But it is uh, our traditional soup. And in 2022, UNESCO recognized the Ukrainian borscht as an object of a cultural heritage. And the soup also contains, uh, you can cook it with uh, meat, but if you are a vegetarian, you can, use, uh, you can use mushrooms or just you can skip. You don't have to cook it with uh, meat. But uh, traditionally, we cook it with beef, pork, or kitchen. Uh, so I didn't include the step-by-step -step, uh, uh, photos because there are a lot of steps you have to follow in order to cook this dish. That's basically it. Thank you for your attention. I yeah. hope you will be able to cook it at home because Almost all of the dishes are easy to cook. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Danilo Mazenko, for your presentation. And um, yeah, 
So now we are moving on to our next presenter um, from South Africa. Are they ready? Okay, it's okay. So I think we can move on to our... Uh, uh? Miss... Uh, uh, yeah, from... Uh, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> forget her name. Oh, for oh, Lydia for, already. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to start with our next presenter from Libya, from Seba University, Fatima Salim Adia. Yeah, okay. How can I turn the camera on? The camera's on. Actually, I need to um, hmm? You will need some of the presentation. Hello, good morning, everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, just a second, please, so I can prepare myself. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, you want to share. Perfect. What a document. Document. Next can share across. Back, back, back it off. Not about. My son had documents screen. Uh, doc Hello. Hello. You are very exposed of Tesman. Can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. First of all, I would love to thank you for such an opportunity. And um, I would love to start with one of the most Libyan dishes, actually the most popular in South Africa. Uh, I would love to start with uh, one of the most dishes in Libya, in Libyan cuisine, is the, a dish known as bazin. Bazin is prepared by boiling barley flour and in water, and a bit of salt, and then beating it to create a dough. Using the maghrif, uh, which is a unique stick designed for this purpose. Afterwards, uh, the dough may, uh, may be placed in a pan and allow time to uh, harden, which is, uh, which is baked or steamed. The salt contributes uh, to the hardness of the basin. Basin may have a bath-like and hardened texture. It may be also prepared using whole wheat flour olive oil and pepper as ingredient. Next, uh, one of the most popular Libyan dishes as well, prepared in the southern regions of the country and some regions of the Western mountains. We find the ftat, we call it ftat over here, a uh, dish is, uh, which is bread covered with stew or brood. Meat and chickpeas. <laughs> uh, the stew accompanying uh, the crumbs is uh, prepared from a mixture of some vegetables in addition to some legumes, especially spe uh, chickpeas, <laughs> with some type of meat, you know, uh, especially lambs, like we most of the time we use lamb meat. Afterwards, um, the stew is added uh, gradually in 
and in the in the form of alternating layers like uh, we when it's prepared like it's uh, like uh, we make it like an addition of layers afterwards uh we have a matruda a matruda is a popular traditional libyan dish uh, well known in the eastern district like it's uh, most famous in the in the eastern di district of libya uh this dish relies mainly on crumbled bread with milk and ghee and sometimes meat uh, is added to it uh, like we have two editions of uh, matruda which is it can be served as a sweet dish or uh, a main course and sometimes meat added to it in addition of <laughs> pardon uh, meat is added in the uh, in the uh, salt dish um, when serving, uh, it's decorated with boiled eggs, uh, dates, and honey nuts. Hi, so... sorry, Miss Fatima, <laughs> but your presentation is not moving. Pardon, I can't hear you. Um, the presentation, oh, the slides are not moving. Yeah. Pardon, pardon it's me. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Uh, so the first one is uh, the basin. As you can see, uh, there's a doll made of uh, wheat, uh, wheat flour, uh, water, and salt only. And, and like it's covered with a stew. Uh, after that, uh, here we have that. Uh, this is uh, this is known as crumbled the uh, crumbled bread. Uh, it's also covered with uh, stew, meats, vegetables, uh, such as so. Also, for the last dish, it's uh, it's the matruda. As you can see, it's uh, it's crumbled bread as well, uh, covered with honey, with uh, eggs, boiled eggs, and dates sometimes. Uh, that's what I said. It's it can be served as a sweet dish or a uh, uh, as a main course, is and is everything clear for now? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So that's all, and thank you again for such an opportunity. I'm really glad that I'm here today. Any questions? <laughs> okay, so I guess this is all. Hansa. Turn off the phone. Turn off the phone. Turn off the phone. Turn Thank you. Thank you so much for Miss Fatima. And then we will go to, to the last speaker, University of Venda from South Africa, Winners Matebula and Hopne Pipindi. Yeah. For the student, the time is yours. Thank you. What's your screen? Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's in the morning in South Africa. My name is Hope Nepipili from University of Venda in South Africa, Limpopo Venda. And I'm going to be doing this uh, presentation with uh, Winas, who's also from South Africa, University of Venda, which is located in Limpopo in South Africa in a village called Venda. So this is my presentation that we are going to do. So I will be presenting five minutes, five minutes each. Uh, so that it can make up to 10 minutes. So uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. So uh, this is our presentation, and this is just an introduction. Uh, these are the food that we have in South Africa. This is a... Uh, 
Uh, we have different types of food which are delicious in South Africa. And <laughs> the first one uh, is the fat cook. This is the ingredients of the fat cook. If you want to try it, uh, wherever you are, wherever country you are. So the fat cook, we eat them as, as some sort of a bread. You, we can replace fat cook uh, with the bread. We can replace bread with fat cook. We can eat them in the morning as a breakfast, or you can eat them as snack. So this is how you prepare the fat cook. Uh, they are in some sort of a, a, a circle. They are in some sort of a, a circle. Uh, how can I put it? In, in, they are like a ball. So this is how you prepare them. So when you, I, I don't know if you can, if you can see me. So when you prepare them, you do it like this so that they can be a ball. You take the flour that you have mixed and then you do them like this, like this. So they will, uh, they, 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 they will end up looking like a ball. So uh, outside they are brown in color. Inside they are white, which is the, which is the flour, which is inside. So you use we use if, uh, for for them to be brown in color the, we use a, a fish oil we also we boil the fish oil then we uh, we put that flour in a, in a fish oil then they will end up looking like this exactly how they are in the picture so they in order to prepare them you just need only three hours 30 minutes to prepare this fat cook uh, so in, in total you can serve 16 of them in three hours so you will only need one kg of flour in order to to to, to save a, a 16 of those fat cooks so this is in if you want to try them, you can try them. And I'm telling you, they are so delicious. If you eat them, you will no longer want to eat it. So to drink your coffee, your tea with the bread, you are going to replace it with the bread cook because they are so delicious. But be be aware, they can make you fat because there's a lot of or oh, there's a lot of, of fish oil in the bread cook. So if you eat them regularly, you can end up being so fat. So um going to the next slides mm -hmm. so um oh this is my favorite so this one we call it quota in our language we call it quota is it like that order so <laughs> this is a uh, the quota that you can eat it whenever you want uh, this one is the street food so you find it it's being prepared at the street. Uh, you find it being prepared. At, it's mostly prepared at the street. So when we are home, you just go to the street and find people. Uh, find people selling it. Then you just buy it. They doesn't. You you don't usually find it in shops. So this one we call it a street a street food, and it's very colorful because it contain contains a lot of ingredients inside. So the quota, um, we use a white bread. We mostly use a white bread. You will never find a quota. Uh, using a, 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 a brown bread. Mostly we use a brown bread to prepare a gota. So we put the fried potatoes and uh, which we call them chips. Then you we, you put you, you, you put the ration inside, then you put the baloney, then you add different sauces to give it a flavor. Then you toast salad greens, then you add cucumber and lettuce, then you sprinkle with salt and vinegar. So what you do, you go and buy a bread, which is a white bread. Then then you cut that bread in half, then after cutting that bread in half, then you take the other half, then you, you, you cut it again, then you make sure that it looks exactly like which is on the picture, then you put all the ingredients that you have inside the bread, make sure that all the ingredients are being prepared, uh, actually, uh, especially the, the fries, you have to prepare them, the viana, you have to prepare them, and only it's only the cucumber and the lettuce that you don't prepare, and the green salad you don't prepare prepare them. Then if you want to prepare a baloney, some of the people prefer not to uh, prepare the baloney. So if you want to prepare it, then you prepare the baloney, then you put it, toss it inside your bread. Or if you want cheese, you put it inside your bread, then it will look exactly like this. Then you toss the vinegar on top or the salt on top, then it's going to be like this. We call it a quarter in South Africa. And it is a street food found in the street. People are making money preparing this type of food, selling it to the people around their villages. Then 
we have a, another one. Oh, this one is so delicious. In most countries, I know you don't eat the chicken feet. In our country, we call it makwanda. It's a chicken feet. Some of the country, they just cut the chicken feet and toss it away. They don't eat the chicken feet. But in South Africa, we eat the chicken feet and they are so delicious. This is the ingredients that we use to prepare the chicken feet. If you want to prepare the chicken feet, if you don't want to toss away the chicken feet, then this is the ingredients that you can use to prepare the chicken chicken feeds. So preparation only takes 15 minutes. It's very, it's very, it takes a, a little time to prepare the chicken feeds. They are, they are so easy to cook. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, 35 in total minutes, then you can serve your chicken feet with pap. Uh, there's a pub on the next slide. You will see what a pub looks like because in most countries they don't eat pub. But then in South Africa, it, it, this is the eat. So this is the chicken feet, which you eat them with pub. Or you can slag however you want it. Some people prepare just to bry them. They just put it on a brice, then they brice them, and then they snack or eat with pub or eat with whatever they want. Oh, this is the Mpani um, worm. M yeah, this is the Mpani worm. We call them Mashonja in our language. It's called Mashonja in my Vanda language, as we have 11 languages in South Africa. Then Chivenda is one of the languages that is spoken in South Africa that I speak in South Africa, Limpopo Venda. So this one, we call it Makwanda. Chicken, uh, this is called, you know, this one we call the, sorry, this one we call the Mupani worms, which is called uh, Mashonja. This is how you prepare Mashonja. They are very clean. You just, pre you, you just wash them so that they can be clean. Then you prepare them. They look a little bit of, uh, I don't know how you can put it. Some people, they, they, they wouldn't want to eat it because they, it, this seems very scary, but they have a high protein and they are very good. So this is how you prepare the cheese, the mouth. The, the, the bunny worms in South Africa and they are very delicious and I hope one day you can try them. So I'm going to give the other five minutes to Winas. Uh, good morning, guys. Um, I'm Winas Machegola from the University of Venda, South Africa, Limpopo. Um, as my colleague said, she will be giving the next five minutes to me, whereby I will start by presenting a beef stew to you. Uh, in, our, um, in our country, most especially in our tribe in Venda, we have uh, different ways, as you know, in South Africa, we have so many tribes. So we have different ways to prepare beef stew. You can prefer, prepare it the way you wish, but more, the most common thing is whereby we take the pieces and then we mix, uh, we have um, onion, which is, we call them nyala. Sometimes you can add galiki, tomatoes, and carrots, which um, we most prefer. And then sort of oil, but uh, no need for oil sometimes. In, in most of the cases, the way the older people, they prepare it. But on our generation, we mix it with oil and also salt. It's an easy meal to, 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 to prepare. Sometimes you can add some potatoes to look that, to, to make sure that they look nice, they look good, they are, it is attractive. Even if, even if you don't know the taste, you will wish to eat it. So it's a simple meal, which is more preferred around vendor and also mostly in, you can say as in South Africa, in large. Um, you can find most of these uh, in events such as funerals, uh, weddings, they prepare much uh, beef than other, other thing like wood chicken stew, it's not much preferred. Beef is the most one, the most wanted uh, stew which is prepared. It's prepared. It, so you will enjoy it, but I know even in other countries, you know this one is familiar with each country, with any country around the globe. So it's just who we prepare it differently. So my next, uh, my next uh, uh, food is the the most wanted uh, cultural food, which we call it derere in our language or in in English. So this one um, is a sort of a plant whereby you can get it on your your yard maybe in farms but most especially in the backyard as you know venda is a rural place whereby we have this other big yard or big stands where we can even do um, agri agricultural activities on on the same place where we are staying where is uh, we are um we are racing there so 
This one you can get it in your in your yard or in the farm. It's, it's mostly preferred by uh, older people. Uh, my generation recently, yes, you can chow it because they say um, it has uh, good vitamin, most especially when you are you are you are pregnant for for ladies when they are pregnant. It can assist them uh, with the growth of the baby. It has a lot of 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 vitamins. So this one is preferred much in when the most especially the older generation. And then the next one uh, is chizimba. It's chizimba in Chivenda. This one here is simple. You prefer you prepare. You prepare beans and 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 maize. Uh, it's simple to cook. You just put them. You just boil them for maybe for a certain hours. But but you have to cook for a long hours. Maybe you can cook them for for two hours. You can start by preparing the 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 the, the, the meal, the the meals, and then then after you can add beans. Whereby it will be one hour, one hour, and then it will be two hours. So uh, this one I, I I'm not so you know this one is. It's a, it's a traditional food on, on South Africa. And then the last one which I can present here is pap, which my colleagues one told you about who eat this with a uh, beef stew and chicken feeds. So this one is pap. To prepare it, it is, easier. it is easy. You boil water and then you put maize meal and then, ah, it's simple. Like I know you know pap even in, on your side, but in South Africa, we eat pap more regularly than anything. If you don't eat pap, you don't grow. It's how they say it, but it doesn't mean that you don't grow. You grow, but they say if you don't eat pap, you don't grow. So this will be our was our presentation for for you based on what we eat, and then we thank you as the investor of Venda students. Uh, that is our presentation. If you want the slides, we can share them with you. I thank you. Okay, thank you for Mr. Winners and Gibson. Yeah, uh, just a moment. Okay, finally, we come to the end of last participant. We will go to, to the next session. Time for take a picture. Yeah, for everyone, please open your camera. Okay, I will keep count of one, two, and three. Once again, one, two, and three. Smile. Okay, for the next session, time to closing. For Miss Aisha, will be handled for closing first. Thank you. Okay, so as we come to the end of day two of this wonderful cultural exchange presentation co-hosted by um, STICOM and ITIA, we would like to express our deepest appreciation for everyone who have participated in making this event a great, a great success. Throughout the evening, we have had the opportunity to learn about many authentic dishes from all around the world. All of them look superbly delicious that it makes um, all of us um, quite hungry. So as we conclude this event, let us remember that culture <laughs> let us remember that culture exchange is not just about sharing our differences but also about celebrating our similarities. Let us continue to build bridges between our communities and deepen our understanding and appreciation of one another. On behalf of the organizers, I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all the presenters who have contributed um, their time and talents to this event. And lastly, I would like to thank all of you, our guests, for being a part of this cultural exchange event. Your presence and participation have made this event all the more meaningful. Thank you, and let's, let us continue to promote cultural understanding and appreciation in our communities. So I will pass this to Ms. Rovita. Okay. Thank you for Miss Aisha. Finally, we come to the end of cultural exchange today. We would like to say thanks again for all students for their wonderful information about cuisine. 
Thank you for sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for our audience. And I hope we can meet again in our session cultural exchange in the next year. In also, I would like to thank for the all participants for attending this cultural exchange today and making this even more interesting. At least we hope to have more collaboration in the future. The cultural exchange for today and here we hope to see you soon. Have a nice day for students and participants and see you again. Uh, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone. You can open. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you.